are Vero, Itze, and Gio, and we will explain what the fuck. Okay, no, what is biomimetics? J. Now, since the beginning of the time, nature has been an inspiration for humans. Biomimetics is the inspiration of models, systems, and elements in order to solve human problems. It is defined as the study of nature and natural phenomena to understand the principles and underlying mechanisms, to obtain ideas from nature and to apply concepts that can benefit science, engineer, and medicine. In other words, humans try to understand how nature works and then try to copy some of the characteristics from nature in order to solve their problems. Now, if you stop and really, really start thinking about this, you will see that it's actually a great idea. Because seriously, who would not like to fly on an airplane as fast as an eagle or to have a cool jacket with a design based on the beetle skin? To start talking about biomimetics, we need to take a look at the ideas of Darwin and Mendel, who talked about heredity and natural selection. If we combine both ideas, we obtain as a result evolution. All the species who live right now in our world passed through this step to survive and live in this present. And really, the only conditions to survive are to be fitness and to require and use the less amount of energy possible. It's not that hard. But why do evolution has a relation with biomimetics? I mean, it has no sense. Well, it does. All the species that are living right now with us had evolved millions of years ago, and they evolved in order to be more efficient without using a huge amount of energy. Otherwise, it is important because, thanks to the evolution of the species, humans only have to take the idea from nature and transform it into a product. Thanks for that, evolution! Now, biomimetics sounds like a new cool cool type of technology, but is it really a new type of technology? <laughs> the answer is no! This idea started when the cavemen were living on the early earth. An example of this can be found in the weapons they used to hunt animals. Their weapons look very similar to the teeth of wild animals, don't they? Like, I don't know, a shark or a tiger. The function of their teeth was to break and cut things, so the humans from the Paleolithic period decided to use that shape in order to hunt or to use as a weapon. Intelligent, right? Here we have another example. Think about the Renaissance period. Now, think about Leonardo da Vinci. Remember now? Yes, that flying machine he created was inspired in the flight of birds. And then, years later, the Wright brothers used that and... Ta-da! This idea ended in one of the biggest and important transport in human life, the plane. But we're over about comparisons, let's just pass to another thing. And here I have one good question about, you know, biomimetics and stuff. Who the hell decided to put a name to this? The thing is, we are so smart and we have the answer to the question we just asked. The word biomimetics started to be used in the 1960s with a man called Otto Schmidt defined the word biomimetics and created the first institute for research and development. However, money is always present in the day-by-day -day of humans. So one day, a woman called Janine Vengeus wrote a book named Biome My My Creek. In this book, she gives some advices about how nature have really good ideas in order to solve a lot of human problems. And well, at the end of it, she solves these ideas. So, Viomimics become a business. Viomimics have a meta to be created and is followed by steps. Step 1 observe. Step 2, identifying the specific function to be developed. Step 3, gathering the material. Step 4, classifying the material. Step 5, imitating nature performance. And step 6, design. 
Now you might say, yeah, yeah, you gave us those steps, but what about them? Can you keep calm, dudes? I'm going to explain. I mean, come on, calm. As you remember, observe is the first step, and in this one, you need to look to your environment and the things that surrounds you. In step two, you have to really think about the specific functions or the reasons why that thing exists and why it's so important. Now, about the materials, well, it's easy. You only have to select the materials that will let you recreate the idea of nature you have chosen. Now, classifying the material. You need to depart the functions that will not help you to solve your problem. If, for example, you would like to use the idea of the function of a fungus, you will discard the color of the organism and the shape. You will only concentrate on the process of the fungus. Imitating nature performance. You have to select the best material in order to recreate the idea you have stolen from nature. <laughs> okay, no, okay, no. So you will choose the best material to simulate as much as you can to the process in nature. And as I told you before, the sign is well simple. You you have to concentrate and make you know cool design. That's basically it. Now, biomimetics can be applied in many aspects of our lives, like medicine with, I don't know, something inspired on the function of a bacteria, or, or art, like a paint inspired in the color of a butterfly, or a coat inspired in the skin of a chameleon, or, or an architecture like a honeycomb, or an aphil who is actually a building, or engineering, like, you know, you know, your planes that, or cars that would be fast as cheetahs or, or you know how to have fun like a game based on a process of nature you know funny stuff relax we're about to finish this just stay with me a little bit longer here are some examples of biomimetics like the bullet train which was inspired on the kingfisher or the whale turbine inspired in the humpback whale or chrysler's prototype inspired in the boxfish or Extigate building inspired in the termite mode, or taper glue inspired in the gecko's feet. I mean, really, gecko's feet, cool. Or velcro inspired in tiny dooms. I don't know how to pronounce that. See you next time, and don't forget to keep studying biology. Adios.